we are pleased to bring you a video that has been requested by many of our viewers. Newcomers and intermediate anglers and tires can be intimidated by the vast selection of patterns available. Brent has selected 12 top trout flies that are easy to tie and proven for many years across the country. Let's go the bench with Brent as he guides you through tying his selection of flies to make your next fishing trip a success. The first fly is a great producer for any river or stream. It has also been a good fly on lakes when the mayflies are present. Well, here we are with our first fly, the pheasant tail nymph. One of our go-to uh, nymphs, a very, very popular fly. And uh, the materials I'm going to use to tie this fly are going to be a size 12 curved nymph hook. I'm going to be using a uh, brown, brown magic tungsten bead here in a 332nd, just a nice little bead. We'll use some uh, small, extra small red wire. I'll tie with some red thread. We'll use a ringneck pheasant tail fi fibers and some peacock curl. A short little list of stuff, materials for it, and a great little fly. You want to make sure you've got some of these, lots of these in your box. You've got different color ringneck pheasant. They're all dyed in different colors. It's got very nice uh, features about it when you get it wrapped around a shank. It really, got some, now we'll take about half a dozen flies just pull that off kind of keeps everything together on the bottom I pull that off the side yet the tips are nice and straight that'll come in handy when you wrap it now I'll take a couple turns up front here I can get my tail I don't want it too long grab a little bit of my red wire for the rib and when I catch materials, always coming at a 45. I've got my wire coming out of the bottom. Solid. Oh, it's not solid. It pulled out. The slippery material, as you know, catch it at a 45. Right there. Okay. Put it in my keeper. Tie those butts back over. Wrap back over themselves just so they cover that wire up when we take our first two turns. Now with that, when I pull that off, you see the fibers want to stay together. And these barbs, they've got a really nice uh, effect coming off there. They're not flat, they're actually nice, really nice buggy material. Okay, and then I'll just come off. we got the red wire, we're going to wrap that in reverse forward for a little segmentation, mostly for strength in my opinion. The pheasant tail nymph is predominantly tied with a copper bead, copper wire. So you can change that up a little bit for colors, but it's it's a really good pattern. So I would suggest make sure you've got lots of these ready to go. Now we need, uh, for our wing case and our legs, I'm going to need a little bigger batch here. I'm going to need to come straight off the side. I'm going to take at least a dozen. I want my tips nice and straight. Come to the end of the tail. And then I'll just tie them on top. Wrap over where my thorax is going to be. One third of the front of the body is my thorax. Take a couple strands or a couple barbs in my peacock curl. Tie that in by the tips. Now you'll see um, out there somewhere there's people there's companies trying to build duplicate peacock curl it's going to be a pretty much an impossible task because uh, they get the coloration kind of looking right when it's in the bag or in the you know in your box or something like that but the thing about peacock curl is when you get it wet it turns bronze really really nice color I just want to show you now I got my hook kind of tipped a little bit. I want to just have it ride straight so my thread's hanging straight down. It's just going to be a little easier at this step. Pull my wing case over the top. Just get a wrap there. I might have one little shorter guy. But these tips are pretty short and that's what you want. You don't want to 
have too long and then your legs get too long and you, have, you know, get half of them on one side and half on another. And I like to have them tied a little bit in a downward position. Make sure they come off the sides for sure. This six out, eight out would be better for this little one, but I had six out, so that's what I grabbed. A couple turns there, a little dab of head cement on there, and you got yourself a great nymph. That'll work anywhere in lakes and rivers, and whatever. It's such a suggestive little fly that it's a short list of everybody's nymphs for sure. Okay, let's go to the next one. The next fly is another top fly created by Skip Morris. Brent will explain not only how to tie this fly, but how to fish it properly for best results. Today, and uh, here's a second fly in our series. Uh, this to uh, imitate a mayfly nymph is about as good as they come. It's a Skip nymph from Skip Morris. Uh, I'm showing it in here, kind of riding it up at an angle. I'm not putting any uh, bead heads on this fly or any weight on the fly at all. I want to rely on the curve of the shank of this hook. It's a little heavier on the rear and it's going to ride a little more of an angle. Very, very important the way the the uh, mayflies emerge. So that would be a key. I wouldn't put weight on this fly. I would either put a split shot or, or a sink tip or something like that to kind of get it in the zone, but make sure the fly uh, kind of rides down a little more natural. It might not be a fly that I would use in, in like in heavy current, but it's great in, in slower current. Uh, slick water situations or or lakes. It's really really good. Okay, let's go over the materials we need to tie the fly. I'm going to just put this on a size uh, 12, 17, 10. This is a 2x nymph hook, straight hook. Be using some 8 dot tan thread. We'll be using some gold wire here. Also, what I use instead of the, uh, the hairs dubbing, now I'm going to use an antron uh, blend. Here's here an antron blend. And natural hairs here, really nice material, and that gives me the really, really cool effect with that little bit of antron in there. Really looks like a, an emerger. Um, it, it, the effect in the water is very, very nice. And I will also use some of this pheasant tail fibers. Get a hook in the vise here. We want a short list of really good flies in your box. Make sure you're tying six or twelve of each of these flies. And then you're going to be ready. You have flies that have been very well proven. Now we'll just come off the back here. We're just going to take a few flies, or uh, fibers I should say, off the pheasant tail for the shell back and the tail. Okay, I'm going to tie ahead a little bit of my tying point. And I'll come in behind the tail and take a loose wrap, and that'll come in just above the barb. It always ties in the tail in a perfect position. Then I'll bring my top back over, just tie it back. Grab my wire. Just kind of a finer gold wire would be good. Nope. That can come off the back side there. And we're going to use our hair tron. You can see how oh, that bright antron is in there and with the hair. That is really the secret sauce. I like using the hair tron so much. I'll dub the body here. We want to make sure we get Nice, even coat on that. I'm going to uh, come from the rear forward. I'm going to get a taper going. Not enough. We're going to, going to add a little more. You guys with a regular vise, of course, you just spin on a little more with your hand. Dub a little more on there. There, we got a nice kind of a taper going. Fairly buggy fly. Now we'll take our uh, pheasant over the top. Make 
after you when you wrap this I'm gonna take my pheasant and I'm gonna tie it down back over itself a little bit so it doesn't slip back when I'm wrapping this forward make sure you keep those pheasant fibers on the top if you have to hold it with your thumbnail make sure they're square and leave them on the top okay that's where they belong oh. My wire must have had a little knot in it, a little weak spot right there. And we'll just come forward. Nice even turns. Take your time when you're tying these flies. Do it right. I'll be the first one to admit that when I started tying flies, I, nymphs look so easy. And I just burned them out. I was tying them quick and I was sloppy. The position... <laughs> All the uh, proportions weren't right, tapers were wrong, they were just, you know, so it's really important to get that all done right. Now you can stay with the same dubbing if you want. I'm going to come in here with a little tan and golden mix, just a little darker for the thorax. Throw another half hitch on here. Use the thorax a little bit darker. You can tie this in many different colors. But you want these fibers coming off the side. If you can't do that when you roll it on by hand, uh, unfortunately you're gonna have to pick it out. With this lace here, I can I get my fibers off the side naturally. More so what I want. Okay, then I'll bring my wing case over the top. Lay my scissors along the top of the the eye there. It's kind of a bit of an angle. Come in here with my eight dot thread. Give it a good little whip finish. You could maybe if you want to put a little hot spot on there. You could use maybe chartreuse thread or something like that. But it's a nice buggy little fly at the bottom. The uh, Antron um, is a great. Uh, material I would really suggest use that it's my favorite anyway nice little tails splayed out so thanks for Skip Morris that's one of uh, the better mayfly nymphs in my opinion out there so get some of them ready for your box different colors sizes that's 12s go to 14s if you can that'll be pretty much cover most of the mayflies for you okay thanks for watching the woolly bugger is arguably one of the top producing flies of all time. Brent will tie up one of his favorites and explain the versatility of this great fly. Well, good day, folks. Uh, next fly on the bench is going to be the woolly bugger. If there's no one could deny that, uh, this fly is spot on the top 12 of any anyone's list. This one's tied here for rivers. That's one I'll be tying for you today. And uh, I'll just show you the materials we need to tie the fly. We're going to be using a 4X long. This is a size 6. Hook can go many different sizes on this fly, of course. Um, the tailing material. This is Select Woolly Bugger Marabou from Wapsi. It's all uh, selected for the Woolly Bugger flies. If I was doing lake flies in a woolly bugger, I would use uh, more of a uh, blood quill like this. Use a nice long fibers. That would be a long slender tail. Where this woolly bugger tail here for rivers and streams is more of a pulsating type action. That's the difference on that. Just so you're aware of that. The uh, body. I'm going to be using some uh, peacock curl. And then on the collar, we're going to be using... Or the hackle will be using some of this nice webby uh, drizzly hackle for that. And also we're going to use some small red wire to reinforce it. A little lead there to uh, give the fly some undulation. Here I've got some 035 lead on this one. I'll just go in there with that right now. And we'll start our thread at the front here. Our dam off this lid. 
can position that a little bit for undulation. I like to uh, get the flies in the zone, so if I'm fishing heavier currents, I'm going to be using more more weight, of course. You can put beads on this fly as well. Okay, well, let's come in here with the woolly bugger marabou plume. Big flies, you can use two. Little flies, you can get away with just one. Size six, I would still call this a, yeah, it's kind of on the border. Large or small, kind of a nice generic. This is a really good coloration to one of one of my favorites. Now there's a thousand variables of a woolly bugger. That's there's no end to a woolly bugger fly. A woolly bugger style. You can put some flash on the tail. This one I do not. I just want nice pulsating action. Sometimes you overdo it with a flash. I like this this fly here this way has produced a lot of fish. I'm not going to change it. Then I'll come in here with some uh, peacock hurl. We're going to need generous supply of that. About six or seven strands. Tie that right in behind the lid. Now it more wires on there. I'll put that in the keeper material clip. Now I could do a dubbing rope with that peacock curl. There's no need. I'm going to be uh, reinforcing that with the red wires. I reinforce my hackle. So I'm take the uh, peacock forward. Tie it off. And this one's going to have the red head on it. Now you could also change color code your your um, weighted flies. Maybe you want to go with an O2O lead. Maybe you want to go with a little different coloration. You can do that. So we'll bring in our grizzly. Fly originated with Russell Blessing. That's basically just a woolly worm that was tied with a red hackle tail. And uh, he added the marabou tail, and there we got a woolly bugger, which is one of the most popular. I'll take a couple turns right at the collar there, and I'll, you can wrap this as sparse as you like. But I like to use the uh, hackle at the rear. Of the saddles, it's, it's a little more webby and it'll, it'll swims a lot better. You get your hackle reversed or reverse wrap your wire forward, gives a lot of strength. Brown hackle on this fly is another choice of mine, and that's one I've seen originally with the peacock body. And I really, really like that. That peacock is or the uh, grizzly, excuse me. And the, and the peacock curl body is turns bronze in the water and it's just a great fly make sure you put some uv or head cement on that you won't be losing this one it's a keeper and it'll definitely put a lot of fly or good trout in the net for you streamer guys and you can tie this up for lakes rivers streams or whatever many different color sizes Chenilles, you name it. There's no end to it. Thousands of good combinations of a woolly bugger. So there it is. We thank you again for tuning in. We'll watch for our next top 12 trout flies coming to you. Pat's Rubber Legs is a simplistic stonefly pattern that has won the hearts of many anglers over the years. It's the perfect fly for a beginner to tie and fish with great results. Well, let's tie up the Pat's rubber legs. Here's a pattern that's been around a long time. I'm going to take some uh, 35 thou lead, pull it on the shank pretty tight, get in the middle of the shank, make sure you grab yourself some pliers, side cutters, cut that heavy lead. You don't want to damage good tying scissors. Cut that off. Come in here with some brown. Six odd thread. I just want my lead right in the center. 
I'll come over kind of bit a little bit of a dam on both sides so don't slide around on you you can put cement on there I don't think you'll need it but okay and then I've got the legs uh, a lot of times guys are using the stretch floss pretty thin and doesn't let have a lot of body I like to just use go back to the old basic the old rubber round rubber hackle original stuff we used it's gets a little stiffer and bouncing off the current and off the rocks and whatever we just it's going to kind of stay in place and behave a little more and act like kick like legs the other ones are going to just kind of fold along the side in my opinion i'll just split them with a little vodka needle for a tail then we'll come in we have the uh, variegated chenille this is nice uh, kind of a brown peacock chenille medium size hooks a size 6 3x long Hook sizes and styles are all such a variation. There's no continuity at all. Now we're just going to wrap some of our chenille forward. About a third of the way. Right there, tie that off. Then I'll come in with... There's two of these together. I'm just going to come right in the middle here. Cut them both the same length. Okay. So I'll have one on each side. Get the vodka needle in there again. Just pull them apart. And I'll spread them like that. Just take my uh, thread, just hold it over the top. And I'm going to wrap in between. One there. Those will fold back nice. Wrap in between these. There you go, kind of just, there you go, just manipulate them around a little bit. Get longer legs in there. I'll just tie that off for now. I'm going to grab another little antennae here. We're just going to tie that on top at the head. And then, uh, my chenille, tie that all off, get my whip finish, pull everything back, get about a five turn whip finish on there, we can put a little dab of head cement in there, then we'll cut our chenille here, make sure you don't cut any of the legs off, after we're done wrestling with them, you don't want to lose them. Pull them right down into the lid there. Split these antennae up. And there it is. Path rubber legs. Now it's a little bit long, so what you want to do, tie it in that way. Because you can always take a little off. I take these four legs here. Come straight up with them. Give them an equal haircut. Those are going to kind of kick forward, kind of an X on those ones. I think that antenna I'm just going to shorten up just a little pinch. I like it like that. It's not going to fall in my tippet. So you got your 35 thou lead on there to get it down. If you don't have enough lead and you're not bouncing off the bottom, 
Uh, you need to be on the bottom of the rocks with this one, okay? So on uh, your tip of knot, be a you know, foot and a half, two feet, three feet, whatever, ahead of the, the tip of here. Throw a little split shot on there. You're going to have to feel that ticking along the bottom. And uh, this, this little line, this little looking fly right here is going to produce a, a lot of really good trout for you when the stoneflies are, not when they're hatching, but when they're down the bottom there, you won't have to see anything moving really, but uh, uh, another great pattern for you. Pretty simplistic. Anybody can tie it. Doesn't take a lot of uh, some materials or anything like that. It's a great beginner fly, and it also catches a lot of fish. So what's better than tying your own flies and catch fish? Catch again on the next one. The San Juan worm has a long reputation of hooking you up into some great trout. Here is another simplistic pattern that should not be overlooked by any angler. Well, here we have a very simplistic looking fly that uh, still needs to be tied properly to get the job done. It's a San Juan worm, as we just mentioned to you. It's a great pattern for streams and rivers. Aquatic worms are always on the menu. I want to uh, use a nice shape. Uh, shrimp larvae hook on it, size 10, 12 for sure. I can go 14s as well, and lakes would be good. Here we're going to put a, a tungsten cool bead on there, 764 on this one. And I'm also going to use some O2O lead uh, to uh, get this fly down. And I don't want to put too heavy a lead on it to take uh, get, get the fly too bulky. This one's got to be down at the bottom. Let's shut off. Got the whole fly pretty much lit it up. We're going to come in the back here. So then slide back and get our thread started. It's a six aught red thread. And the body is simply going to be this round, uh, totally round uh, red vinyl. There's V rib if you wish. You can use V rib. I like the round when I compress it. I can get it back here and it's going to kind of blend right in with my lead. It's going to, I can pull down on it now, get a little pressure on it. I can bring my thread up to behind the bead. So I'll just leave it right there. I've got it cut off. I'm going to hand over hand this fly or the materials. And lots of pressure on it there. You see when I'm coming forward that this flattens out. Got really nice segmentation. The rib looks pretty good too. But I like this round. When you pull it flat, it just really has a nice. And here's another fly that looks so innocent, you're maybe not even going to bother tying it or fishing it because it don't look as sexy as some because they don't have all the eyes and legs and all the other paraphernalia hanging off it. It's a pretty simple, easy to tie bug. It is such a great producer. San Juan worm, I know, one of my local rivers here, the Bow River, I mean, it's... San Juan worm is probably the fly over the years caught more fish than any. We still got a little bit of a taper going at the back there. Um, whatever. So I would say downsize this to a this and a 10. On a river situation, that'd be just plumb fine. Lakes, if you're going to be fishing the bottom of the lakes, this will work very, very well. You chronomid guys, uh, these red blood worms are on the bottom. That's how everything starts, the larvae. And uh, go at about half that size. You might want to go to a small uh, V rib to get it done, but make sure you have a good selection of these uh, blood worms with you, okay? And uh, just I'm giving you the real basic stuff here. Flies that are easy to tie, but most importantly, these flies catch fish. So here's definitely the San Juan worm. You must have it. Here is a smaller version of the San Juan worm that is super effective in lakes to imitate the blood worm that is prevalent in most water bodies. It is very common for lake anglers to ignore this effective little fly. 
Fishing this fly on the bottom is deadly. The X caddis is a creation of Craig Matthews of West Yellowstone. It's the perfect fly. Easy to tie, and the fish love it. Tie this one in color variations to suit your local hatch. Well, here's our first dry fly on our dozen top trope flies. Uh, it's gonna, let's go over the materials we need to tie the fly. It's going to be a cinnamon caddis uh, coloration here. I'm going to use some Antron dubbing. Using a size 12 traditional dry fly hook. I'd go to 14s a lot of times. I'll just demo that in a little larger hook for you today. Here's some nice uh, fine deer hair with some good even tips on it. You want to make sure you got nice little square tips on there. Here's some gold Zalon for the trailing chuck. And we're going to be using some uh, wax thread. This wood duck color matches the dubbing quite nicely. Very easy to tie. Craig Matthews has des designed it. some really, really nice flies. And and here's one uh, just to show you the simplicity of a, of a fly that is very, very effective. This fly would be shortlisted on a lot of anglers' go-tos for sure. I'm just going to come off here about just a few strands of that just for the trailing shuck right there okay pull off anything else I'm kind of sticking out of the way there a few little longer ones and they really notice that trailing shuck there that's quite important okay I'll just throw a little half hitch on my thread here I'll come in with the Antron for the body you can always treat this as well but it floats very well with the, the wing, the way he's got it, and I'm going to put a nice thin little dubbing on here. Start the middle, I'm going to go back as you know the caddis are pretty good sized bodies on them. I don't have to get too thin like a mayfly. Come forward. Little cinnamon caddis. Then we'll bring in our deer here. I'll pinch off the bottom here. Always take a little more than I need. Make sure we don't have any under fur in there. Get it in our hair stacker. Drop that down. Tap that in there. You can use elk on this as well. If you get some nice short elk hair, use that. So here's our wing. We're just gonna I'm gonna pinch it on both sides. My thumb and my forefinger. Get my thread just behind the eye. I'm taking a few good turns, a little more pressure each. One's getting a little more than the last. When I pull up, it leaves everything on top. I'll just pull those butts back and we'll get some turns ahead. I well, like the elk hair caddis, very similar. We'll be doing that one a little later, I think. I'm not sure which all I got on my little list here, but I know the X caddis is one I, I wanted to show you for beginners. It's such an easy fly to tie and you will catch fish with it. Well, no problem at all. There's a lot of good anglers that'll vote for this bug right here. I'm just going to get that little hair cut right off with the butts. Make sure you don't get any of the wing cut off. Trimming hair, you always take your time. Take your time. That's what you want to do. Another little butt or two in there. I can also just grab them and pull them off. But this fly floats very well. You can see with that that buoyancy with that hair, nice little trailing chuck there. Something straggling here, I can see on my camera. Craig Matthews X Caddis. Don't go home without it, go fishing without it. You want to make sure you get enough of these, put some in your box, different colors, a couple different sizes. 
and uh, you'll definitely be in a fish no matter where you go. All right, let's get on to the next fly. We like to thank you for joining us today. Brent will be bringing you another six top trout flies in the next video. Don't forget the basics of lake fly tying video from Brent in this series.